So, you're going to clinical, and at your clinical, they're using something called a QB test, or uh, also QB check, um, and you want to be ready for it, and you don't know what it is, here's a quick down and dirty uh, on what to expect. So, the QB test is used as a diagnostic aid for ADHD. Here you see a child taking it. Um, that ball on his head is a reflective ball that's tracked by the camera, kind of like um, in like stealth um, for neurosurgery um, or um, other kind of things. Um, you also see it in some of the uh, the TMS um, uh, setups as well. But um, it's tracking all the movements uh, this child's making as well as uh, he's taking a test on the computer that you will be seeing in the office where the QB check is something that is, it can be done at home. Uh, it's online and um, it's uh, very similar. It just uses your, uh, or the patient's um, video camera in their laptop or computer to do similar tracking is just not as accurate. Um, like I said, you can do it in office, you can do it online, that is called QB Check. Um, it, you can um, implement it for children 6 to 12 or adults as well. Uh, the tests are different for children and adults. Um, it just um, they're asked to do different slightly different things, uh, very slightly. The IQ of the individual has to be over 75 to take the test or 75. Uh, it uses something they call Q scores, which is basically just standard deviations um, to kind of uh, address if uh, the person's neurotypical or not. Normal scores for these tests are from negative one to one. Um, and uh, slightly atypical is one to 1.5, and then atypical is 1.5 or higher. So you'll see here is you'll see that there is a um, test a little blurry here where you can see that the, the individual is scoring um, uh, quite high on on their, um, their, their test and their Q scores are high and you can see on this kind of um, what I would call a kind of rough graph that they are likely to have something going on. Now, um, key scores give us a benchmark against neuro neurotypical individuals. It doesn't, uh, it, it isn't a diagnostic criteria for ADHD. Something else could be going on. There are multiple factors that could be occurring, but it is showing you how they differ from a neurotypical individual in their same age range. It tests reaction time, reaction time variation, emission errors, um, multiple response errors, um, how often errors occur, degradation over time of uh, the individual's performance, all which are great um, uh, markers for uh, somebody that will possibly could have ADHD as well as the tracking of the movement and things like that helps uh, um, not uh, capture that uh, hyperactivity uh, factor as well. Um, and uh, you can see on the other side here, uh, on one side of the screen, what it normally looks like. Um, on the top, you have the head movement of the individual um, from the center of the screen. This individual's uh, head's moving around quite a bit. You see uh, the distance moved, and you see how there's more movement over time. Um, yeah, your Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4 are just different sections of your test. Then at your attention and impulse control, you see um, the graph that looks uh, slightly confusing, but you can see that um, they have correct responses, um, commission errors, so, uh, you know, incorrect responses, and your outliers. Um, there's no outliers in this particular uh, case, but as you come down, you can see um, 
your key scores for things, um, time active was uh, much higher for this individual. Distance of the head traveled higher, area movement, uh, micro events, which are just micro movements when, you know, the, the head's moving like almost a mil, it counts like all the millimeters moved in very small movements. Um, you know, uh, you can see that the reaction time variation was pretty low and pretty normal. Um, they reacted about uh, within the same time, um, you know, and this can uh, help uh, ensure that they just didn't disengage with the test or something like that. Um, their emission errors were low. Um, their reaction time was um, headed towards more of an atypical, um, but is in the slightly atypical uh, range um, and uh, so forth and so on. And that's basically how you would read this test. Uh, it kind of provides an unbiased objective information. It's a helpful diagnostic diagnostic tool for females, and it's going to be very similar to the TOVA. So um, I hope that uh, um, when you go to clinicals, you can um, know a little bit about this, and you can know that, you know, it measures hyperactivity, that's going to be your micro events, uh, your, uh, and your movements, your impulsivity, which will be your commissioners, and um, your inattention, which is your emission errors, reaction time issues, and reaction variation. Uh, and that can help uh, drive, um, you know, treatment of people that are already being treated for ADHD um, to track their improvements and also help be an objective tool for, um, you know, uh, diagnostic. Uh, issues with patients or um, to kind of uh, help um, study the diagnostic um, of that patient.